Hello and welcome to the Bio Process International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, the online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the chat window on your screen. After the presentation, we'll begin the question and answer portion, and I will ask our speaker your questions from the chat window. Your questions in the chat window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. Thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Bala Raghunath from Millipore Sigma. Thank you, Leah. Greetings, and thank you all for joining this webinar today. Today I would like to take you through a brief high-level overview of the growth opportunities for biopharma companies in emerging markets, the unique challenges and needs of this market, and how collaboration between biopharma end-user companies and supplier companies can emerge as a key success factor in fostering this growth and mitigating the risks that may be associated with this market. Now, emerging markets can present a significant growth opportunity for biopharma companies. In a 2016 survey by the Economist Intelligence Unit, it was found that expanding into new geographic markets figured as one of the top three growth strategies for biopharma companies. The pro three prominent growth strategies articulated by companies and listed in the survey are shown in the bubble on this top right side of the slide. Also significant uh, is the fact that about 52% of the companies surveyed indicated a plan to add production capacity or grow market share in emerging markets of Latin America, Middle East, and Africa. Now in the same survey, many biopharma companies indicate that they have already entered the emerging markets of China, Brazil, India, and Mexico, while the markets such as Indonesia, Taiwan, Taiwan, Turkey, or South Korea came up frequently cited as anticipate entering. So what this means is this survey and many of the recent trends indicate that emerging markets present one of the key focus areas for many biopharmaceutical companies seeking growth and expansion. Now it would be instructive to take a look at the biopharma market landscape and lay out the various levels or stages of development among the market players as well as the attributes that characterize the players in that market. On one end, one may see a mature market and these uh, constitute the regions of the United States, Western Europe, etc., where the biopharma therapeutic pathways and approaches are well set with established processes and operations. There are many licensed and launched therapies in these regions, and the current focus within these regional players extends to exploration of new therapeutic modalities, as well as perhaps the development of more efficient current processes for example, through next generation or intensified processes. Now, on the other hand, or at the other end, one can see an early stage emerging market, and these would be with the regions of Middle East, Africa, Southeast Asia, and Latin America, where many of the companies are beginning to enter, explore, as well as venture into therapies that are already established and perfected by the mature markets. There are few local manufacturers and minimal production base in these regions. Now, somewhere in between would come some of the more developing or emerging markets of China, India, and South Korea. Now, these markets have been active for over the past decade or so, and they are rapidly developing adopting, and in some cases, locally producing the newer therapies from established markets. Many of these um, regions have locally approved biosimilar or biobetter drugs, and they support a modest production base. Now we move into what we call as our first poll question, and um, we would like you to uh, check the answer on the screen here. 
So how important is technical collaboration with a trusted supplier for your company's success in emerging markets? Important, not important, don't know. You have about 30 seconds to answer. Again, how important is technical collaboration with a trusted supplier for your company's success in emerging markets? Important, not important, do not know. Thank you. I'll move on to the next uh, slide now. Now, as we try to distill the common needs and challenges of the emerging market regions, we can see a number of common factors. One is a need to reach therapies faster to the market, to both capture market share as well as drive growth. Now, as you move down the list, uh, companies are also faced with the need to have accessibility to technical and application expertise that are locally accessible. Now, furthermore, the ability to find and grow as well as train local workforce is important, staying on top of the local regulatory guidelines and expectations, as well as establishing the right manufacturing strategy and footprint. All of these can be um, uh, captured as uh, some of the major needs and challenges for the, for the emerging market uh, companies and environment. Now, overall, this presents a need for a comprehensive end-to-end -end solution and a tremendous opportunity to collaborate with a trusted supplier partner with a global network, technical reach, infrastructure capabilities, and experience. Now, how can we imagine the influence of such a collaboration in nurturing growth in emerging markets? Now, collaboration can help leapfrog many developmental, scaling, and operational challenges. And while uh, collaboration with a trusted, experienced partner supplier can help in a number of different ways to drive growth. For one, it can help reduce the development timelines for molecules in the pipeline through a holistic approach to process optimization. Now, this is made possible due to the comprehensive knowledge base, the diverse experience, and a strong global network that often exists within the vendor-supplier teams. Um, now, these may also pertain, for example, to the, the know-how uh, relating to uh, applications, products, equipment, uh, operating methodologies that may be applicable towards a variety of therapeutic drug manufacturing processes. And furthermore, in many cases, the vendor supplier may have a network of collaboration labs or centers that are designed to cater to the end user developmental needs. These capabilities also further help to ensure on-time startup reduce startup delays, and also ensure a predictable, scalable, and reliable operation, as well as provide avenues for next generation processing methodologies, as well as a discussion around facility fit formats. Now with this, we move to the second poll question of today, and I'll read this out for you. Besides product quality and supply, what would you expect from a, let's see, I think the question is, uh, so what would you expect from a successful collaboration with a trusted supplier? Please rank in order of importance, reduce developmental timelines, training or upskilling local workforce, locally available technical expertise, low total cost of ownership, end-to-end -end solution capabilities, and do not know. I'll read this again for you, the question. Besides product quality and supply, which are a given, what would you expect from a successful collaboration with a trusted supplier? Please rank in the order of importance the, the different boxes that are provided. We have five more seconds. 
Okay. Thank you very much. I'll move, to, move on with the presentation now. So we were talking about collaboration, right? So we will highlight here a couple of case studies to show the importance and impact of such collaborations. So here is a case study. The slide shows a case study of an emerging market customer. And here the customer was facing significant challenges in achieving the desired levels of yield and purity for a fusion protein that was expressed in a Cho cell host. Uh, there were very high impurity levels, aggregate levels in the feed solution up to the tune of about 10%. And um, a, a very robust process with high yield and purity had to be delivered uh, for, for optimal performance. And of course, the timelines were quite tight for developing the process. Now, we entered into a collaboration with the customer to further investigate this issue with our local expert chromatography resource and also in consultation with our global technical expert team, we screened several different resins and operating conditions using a high throughput screening methodology in our local M-Lab collaboration center to optimize the process for the right high yield and purity trade-off. Now the process took nearly about four plus months to develop and optimize, but in the end, and uh, we were able to establish a robust purification process that achieved both the yield purity stipulations by the customer, and we were also able to transfer successfully the process to manufacturing so that we have a, a robust, predictable, and scaled up process operation. Now we'll also show another case study here, and this is a case of a single use final fill and finish uh, operation. And in this example, again, for an emerging market customer, the customer was interested in establishing a single-use redundant sterile filtration step for their cytotoxic drug filling application. Now, in this case, uh, we designed a single-use fill and finish setup in our local M-Lab pilot facility and also established and demonstrated the various uh, flow path operations that are typically required for a successful filling operation. The operation sequences were then final, further fine-tuned and uh, during the visit by the customer to our lab before we finalized the design. And that design was, of course, finalized with their input. So this was a showcase of our engineering capability, strength, as well as regulatory awareness, which made, it, uh, made the collaborative uh, discussions and exchange with the customer very fruitful and led to a very successful outcome. So in the end, we were able to successfully establish a process for mixing and redundant sterile filtration of the final drug in a single-use format. Right, moving on. Now, changing focus, if we come to the risk perspective, what might be the top three concerns that biopharma companies may be thinking about emerging markets, say, five years from now? Now, the following three concerns or risks are listed here, and the, the prominent uh, among them are the regulatory and political concerns in the regions, uh, emerging markets that they, they would serve, ability to access or retain quality local labor, and lack of cultural or country-specific knowledge um, in that particular region. Now, this is time for our final poll question. Um, in this uh, in today's presentation. So please rank the importance of the factors listed below in contributing to the success of your emerging market venture. Speed to market, technical expertise, skilled workforce, regulatory clarity, and strong manufacturing base. So you have 30 seconds to answer. One more time. Please rank the importance of the factors listed below in contributing to the success of your emerging market venture. Speed to market, technical expertise, skilled workforce, regulatory clarity, and strong manufacturing base. Okay, five more seconds. Okay, thank you. We'll move on with our presentation now. Okay. We would like to ask here, could collaboration with a supplier, for example, be a tool for risk mitigation? Now, for risk mitigation, if you look at, again, the economist survey, 
Companies most often look at addressing these risks by building internal capabilities, collaborating with outside experts, as well as engaging in local partnerships. Now, alongside the point relating to collaborating with outside experts, we would like to suggest some avenues for biopharma end user companies and suppliers collaboration to contribute to this risk mitigation. Now, can collaboration with suppliers help navigate an uncertain regulatory environment? Now, if you were to answer that, one can, uh, one can answer this by saying that an experience in the trusted supplier company often has a repertoire of background and experience in regulatory guidance pertaining to many bioprocess applications. This knowledge and experience can help guide process characterization and validation studies in conformance with both local and global standards. It also helps to establish a robust operation design space. Furthermore, it provides an opportunity to both collaborate as well as train some of the local regulatory bodies on bioprocess applications. Lastly, the strong product quality culture and framework that exists within these uh, supplier companies help provide strong documentation support that is often required during audit and investigation. Furthermore, the risks uh, pertaining to, say, skilled labor force may be mitigated by appropriate training programs to upskill the local workforce, and the cultural gap gets addressed by the supplier company having local resources that are strongly networked among their global teams. Now in this slide, uh, we give an example of a collaboration case study from a risk mitigation perspective. Now this example relates to a training program that we had put together in collaboration with the Singapore government or their Workforce Development Authority, which is the WDA, and also the consortium of companies that had moved into Singapore over this past decade to set up manufacturing capabilities. The objectives of this collaboration was to attract, develop, and sustain highly skilled and resilient workforce for the biologics manufacturing industry. And one of the focus work streams or priorities was to train the local workforce. Now as part of this uh, key part of this uh, consortium, we um, developed several operator and su supervisor training programs and delivered to upskill the Sing Singapore workforce. At the last count, Roughly about 70% of the Singapore pharmaceutical workforce were trained by our company, and 80% of those uh, were in the manufacturing operations. So an example of a very successful collaboration where we had both the government, the companies, the regulators, and everybody involved. And lastly, we are coming to the final summary slide here. And to summarize, uh, today we highlighted emerging markets as a factor that represents one of the top growth strategies for many biopharmaceutical companies. Now, but playing in the emerging market also poses uh, some risks for companies. Now, by fostering a framework that enables collaboration between end-user companies and trusted suppliers, um, one may find uh, that as a catalyst to drive growth while mitigating associated risks and challenges. Now that's uh, my final slide on this topic, and thank you for listening, and I would welcome any questions you may have. Thanks, Bala. So the first okay. question is, in which emerging markets are you present? And in which of these do you have local technical support or your labs? Okay. Um, well, um, we are present in roughly about, say, 190 or so countries across the globe. Uh, and this would be either in a direct com with a direct commercial team and a support te technical support team or through a distributor relationship. Uh, and of these, the emerging markets of, say, Asia, Southeast Asia, um, Latin America, and Middle East, Africa, I would say, are the ones where we have currently a broad and increasing presence. And uh, roughly, um, I would say we have uh, roughly about nine global collaboration centers or M-Labs. And out of these, actually, seven of these are in, in, in the emerging market regions. Okay. 
And for the training programs you mentioned, do you mostly offer standard training courses or would you be willing to provide custom courses? Oh, well, um, we, we offer both, um, both standard and customized courses. Um, typically what happens is there is a discussion uh, with the end user company or our customer to determine what their specific training needs are. And many times we are able to choose from the vast repertoire of training courses we've already developed over the years and use them for the training purpose. Or we may uh, conjointly develop a course that might specifically suit and customize it for the, for the training uh, requirements. And what therapeutic areas are companies pursuing in emerging markets? Um, this is a good question. Um, I suppose uh, the local market dynamics in emerging markets can, can be quite different I suppose from uh, one emerging market to the next, and and this depends, uh, I suppose, on a number of factors. And uh, uh, as an example, it could be based on the um, medical need, the 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 patient access or insurance coverage, drug approval processes, etc. Um, now, in general, the therapeutic areas for pursue. I would say extends to vaccines, diabetes, oncology, uh, or cancer therapies, and this could cover both small molecules, uh, generics, as well as protein-based therapies, including monoclonal antibodies, recombinant proteins, and more, and more importantly, biosimilars that are entering these markets. Okay, and so we just have one last question. Um, what is the best way to determine the regulatory requirements in different emerging markets? It's a very, very good question. <laughs> Oftentimes, uh, some of the more developing markets have their own equivalent health authorities. For example, in China, you have the SFDA. The India has its own equivalent of the FDA. So the best way is to collaborate you know, reach out and link with those regulatory authorities and kind of proactively seek out uh, an audience with them, kind of explain, you know, what you're trying to do and what their requirements might be. And uh, if, you, if you notice some of these uh, uh, developing emerging markets, about 10 years ago, they did not have very clear guidelines, for example, on uh, um, you know, biopharma recombinant protein processing. But over these past 10 years, you know, they have increasingly found the need to establish local regulations, and they've all created their own uh, regulatory guidelines that are specifically applicable to their, their markets. So I think that would be the best way, you know, to proactively seek out, collaborate, discuss, and that cannot be overemphasized. And many times, you know, the other, the other point that I mentioned during the presentation is to seek out uh, experienced supplier companies, many of whom may have a, a good knowledge about how things get done in other emerging markets, and perhaps that could be used as a lead-in for the discussion and conversation with the regulators in a given, given market. Okay, very good. Well, thank you, Bala. Thank you. And thank you to our audience for <laughs> thank you to our audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on demand viewing on our website. And as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at our future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast covering many aspects of bioprocessing. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Thanks again.